Christ's command to his followers before his ascension to heaven was for them to be his witnesses in Jerusalem, all Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Our Lord did not intend for the good news of his death and resurrection to stay local, but instead it was to be taken globally. In this third section of Acts, the adventure continues as the gospel is taken to the ends of the earth. Let's join Scott Pauley now for today's study. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Are you ready to go to the uttermost? Aren't you glad that our God saves to the uttermost? He's not bound by time. He's not bound by geography. He's not bound by anything but our unbelief and disobedience. And we've been following the adventure through the book of Acts. And I'm glad to report to you today on the authority of the Word of God that the adventure continues. Now, we learned that in the opening chapters of the book of Acts, the gospel advance and the gospel adventure uh, continued in Jerusalem. That was the starting point. And then uh, it overflowed the banks, so to speak, the, the domino effect, the ripple effect. It moves outward uh, to Judea, then to Samaria. Now we turn our attention to the third, final, and longest section of the book of Acts. It begins in Acts chapter number 10 and continues all the way through the end of this book. And what do we learn in the final uh, movement of the book of Acts, we learn that the adventure continues to the uttermost part of the earth. So in other words, exactly like God planned, exactly like Jesus said, and exactly like the Holy Spirit wanted to move, the message of redemption now gets to all people. And I want to pause just a moment before I teach and just testify and say, praise God. I'm so grateful that the gospel message didn't just come to the Jew. It came to the Jew first and also to the Greek. You see, I live in the also. Uh, I, I'm one of those that the message came to, and I've been brought into the family of God. And so it's a message for all people. It's a message for all time. It's a message for all places. And that is the truth that we come to in Acts chapter number 10. Because Acts chapter 10 is a pivotal passage. Acts chapter 10 is where the door of faith, the message of the gospel, swings open wide to the Gentile world. Now, you remember uh, that our Lord Jesus Christ came unto his own, meaning to his own world, his own creation, and his own people received him not. So by and large, uh, the nation of Israel, when he came, rejected Christ as their Messiah. Some believed, praise God for that, uh, we're brought into the family of God. Some continue to believe, and we pray for much more. Uh, but as you read instead of the New Testament, you see that the Lord Jesus Christ did not come just to bless Israel. He came through Israel so that the whole world could know who he is and believe. So when you come to Acts chapter number 10, you come to the record of a Gentile man and his family named Cornelius coming to faith in Jesus Christ. And he uses a Jewish believer uh, that we know very well, Simon Peter, to get him the gospel message. Now, this is a fascinating story, and we're going to spend a little time in this, in this story, but I want to begin today just with the opening verses. In Acts chapter 10, verse number 1, we read this, There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, I mean, I just pause and say, God knows where you are, and God knows who you are, and God knows everything there is to know about you. You may be in some far-off place, but I want you to know the Lord has his eye on you, and he has his ear open to prayer, because the Bible says in verse 2 that this man was a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people, and prayed to God always. Now, that sounds very good, doesn't it? That sounds like a very religious man. It's important to note that this man did not yet know Christ. This man had not yet received the gospel. 
religion is never enough. If religion had been enough, then this man's piety and and fear of God and giving alms to the people and prayers would have been enough to get him to heaven, but it wasn't. However, I would point out to you that when a man follows the light he has, God always gives him more light. So he's operating on the truth that he knows. And as he follows that truth, oh, this is wonderful. God opens the door of the gospel to him. The Bible says in verse 3 that he saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius? And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa, and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodgeth with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. I love how God connects things. Uh, He not only knew who Cornelius was, where Cornelius was, he knew who Simon Peter was, and he knew where Simon Peter was. He knows how to connect the two. The Bible says in verse 7, When the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. So here's where the story begins. The story of the gospel opening to the Gentiles. The story of the message of Jesus getting to me, getting to you. uh, The story of the adventure continuing to the uttermost. Here's where it begins, with one man. One man who's hungry for truth. One man who just wants to know God. And here's the principle I want you to take away from the story today. It is this, that God is working on the other end. Uh, We think we're working for the Lord. Let me just remind you that God is working where we can't see. And God is working in the hearts of people we do not yet know. God is always working on the other end. So as surely as God was working in Simon Peter's heart, God was working in Cornelius' heart. And God was working the circumstances to bring the two together. Why is this important? We'll continue in the story in our next study. I hope you'll read ahead and do your homework. Meditate on this passage of Scripture because the Lord has much to teach Simon Peter. But for me, this is a faith-increasing story because it reminds me God always has a people. And that somewhere in the worst circumstances, in the, in the direst situation, in the darkest places of this world, there are still people who want to know God, who are searching for truth. Look at this man, Cornelius. Look at the description of him in Acts chapter number 10. He is fearing God. He is seeking God. He is waiting on truth. Friend, I want you to know that you're going to cross paths somewhere, uh, perhaps this day, with someone who really does fear God, and they're seeking God. You don't know it, but in the quiet place, They're praying somebody will help them know who God is, and they are waiting to hear the truth. I remember years ago bumping into a young man from Asia on the campus of the University of Tennessee. We just bumped into each other by the good providence of God on a street corner. He received the gospel. He received Christ. When it was done, he said to me, you don't know this, but before we started our conversation tonight, he said, I literally was walking down this street looking up into heaven, and saying out loud, if there is a God, I wish he would show himself to me. Friend, I want you to know, somebody somewhere today is seeking the truth, and you and I can be the ones who walk through that open door and deliver it to them. Remember that God is working on the other end. Let God work in you today. Though no more scripture is being written, The story of the furtherance of the gospel is being written at this very moment, and we get to be part of that story. The heart of our Savior is as passionate for the lost today as it was just before He ascended in Acts 1. Will you get in on what God is doing in the world today to reach the lost with the gospel? This is why Enjoying the Journey exists to encourage and to equip you in the work of the gospel. Whether it is through the daily broadcast or the many resources on our website, Scott and all of us on the Enjoying the Journey team are passionate about people coming to know Christ as Savior. We pray that you truly will enjoy the journey. 
But we also pray that you will bring others with you on your journey of following Christ.